So welcome back to another video and I'm going to dedicate this one to a viewer who I had a really great conversation with on my other video uh, that's probably now I think my most popular one on my channel which was uh, essentially talking about the difference between the guys who are getting results and not getting results are essentially those who are taking the initiative or taking action to go and start a conversation with someone. Feel free to skip past this. If you just wanna hear uh, all the juicy advice, then by all means, you are more than welcome to move forward. But if you wanna uh, certainly find out what things this guy had, um, had asked for help with in his relationship, and perhaps maybe you are someone who uh, is struggling in their relationship and they just don't know how to effectively communicate to their partner, or you're just worried that you aren't being as supportive as you'd like to be, then, um, then definitely at least stick around for, for what he had to uh, to say. Um, but I'm just on it now. So what I'll do is I'll, I won't worry about reading my response because um, that was like the shortened version of what I'm going to be talking about now. Um, but he basically said, uh, yeah, thanks, bud. And yes, maybe videos on how to optimize the relationships that you have. I, for example, am in a relationship and at times I do wonder if there's an effective way to communicate in a way that sparks her emotions more to where she feels I'm the one who those men, uh, those few men who understand female communication can relate to. So already, I mean, this, this is something that really a lot of guys do struggle with. And this is probably the main difference between men and women that we have are very different ways to communicate to each other. And even what you'll find when I do go through this video, there will be ways that you can certainly like like get there um, or, or guess what the problem is that you can help out with before it's actually said or mentioned. But other times, uh, unfortunately, we, we aren't psychic and we don't always know what the other person is thinking. Uh, I think a lot of women have a very hard time understanding that men can have moments of just being in the moment and not thinking about anything. Unfortunately, they have absolutely no idea that we can sit there with a blank poker face and um, and that's absolutely okay. I got hiccups now. Um, uh, whereas uh, for women, they have like 40 plus different tabs open in their head at any one time. We're so different in how we think and communicate and it would be a good to see examples how best to optimize that strength to bond. Okay, now I gave him, I did give him sort of like a short version of what I'm going to talk about in this video. So, uh, uh, so bear with me with that. Um, and then, but I'd then asked uh, though, like how long had he been in a relationship for and were there any particular things that he was struggling with in that relationship? Uh, and then he put, yeah, thanks, Dan. That definitely helps. I would be interested if you got around to doing a more detailed video on listening examples in written form. It's quite challenging to get across. So I do appreciate that. Um, here we go. Uh, so it's over two years now and we have our fallings out from time to time. But she is a great woman. And I've learned now I'm 33. That looks really asking deep. And although not a supermodel, I learned that it doesn't really matter for the long term. She must be a help me uh and a support who uh, i think that must must be uh and she must help uh and she must be a uh, she must help me be uh and support me uh who champions me in my ambitions and goals as well as having common interests uh i ask you because i find today's dating game is very disposable and people give up too easily and i just want to be that boyfriend who goes the extra mile don't get me wrong, I still have healthy boundaries where she knows I won't tolerate nonsense, but equally, I want to be the boyfriend who just gets it. So uh, just definitely a couple of things there. Let me just stop that. Um, so definitely just a couple of points uh, that I did write down before I, I kind of give you four things um, is, first of all, don't worry about her trying to understand men or don't worry about women trying to understand men that's their responsibility to concern themselves with, with figuring out how they can be the perfect partner to their boyfriend or to their husband. All you can worry about is the things that you have control over, which is yourself, really. So 
only focus on what can you do to be a better boyfriend and leave it to her to try and figure out how she can be the better girlfriend. But as you kind of mentioned, I mean, definitely relationships are a lot more disposable. I think really for the younger generations now, and it's kind of sad because they don't, uh, because of just how much choice I think they have through dating apps and just promoting themselves online, it's so much easier these days to actually find a new suitor. And I think a lot of people put so much pressure on that first date to try and find that perfect person rather than giving it a bit of extra time to grow and develop. But that is kind of through dating apps though. I mean, when you meet people through social circles, you're actually kind of building a relationship um, as like a friendship almost first. And then that kind of evolves into um, having something a lot more romantic or there's some sort of like an integration or an intertwining of the two as both of them are playing out. But yeah, first of all, uh, don't worry about um, her trying to be better for you. Just worry about you trying to be better for her. And definitely for anyone else who's watching, if you find that you're the one putting in the effort into a relationship, but it's not being reciprocated, then that is really then for you to certainly have a think about, are you in the right kind of relationship? Not a case of, oh, I'm going to just, it's, it's not going my way, so I'm going to just exit. But it's then an important sort of step to start recognizing like, okay, what aren't I happy with in this relationship? What can be done about it? What kind of discussion do I need to have with my partner to try and work things out and genuinely find out, are we as compatible as I would like to think? Or maybe we are just very different. Maybe we just have very different demands. And if we can't cater to each other, then maybe the sensible approach is to kind of part ways. Um, another point I, I'd put down, uh, there's only a couple here before I go through the, the main main things that you can do. Uh, sparks in a relationship always die down. Oh yeah, so you mentioned about with that, um, that you know, time go, as time goes on, um, the uh, the spark quite is, isn't quite there. That is just very normal. That's just what happens when you've spent a lot of time with people and you get very comfortable with them. There's a lot less effort that's even needed, if at all, to try and impress them, hold their attention or hold attraction. Um, you just find that you're then just together, which is why I think definitely my my four points will be quite useful for that. Um, uh, relationships are about compatibility and it is about being uh, a team. Um uh, and, and trust me when I say, especially when you mentioned with um, the looks side of things about not dating a, a supermodel, um, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I can assure you pretty much almost all of the dating coaches that I've worked with and that I know haven't stayed or in relationships with supermodels or they never married supermodels of, of sorts. If anything, I think it's probably more the, the stress and the insecurity of it. Um, it can be a lot. It's, you know, I know they will say that they can uh, pull these women, but they certainly can't seem to hold on to them. And so they actually meet women who are a lot more on their their wavelength, not just personality wise, but certainly attraction wise as well. Um, so, I mean, beauty only gets you so far really in the dating scene. And at the end of the day, if you're looking to spend a long time with someone, especially if you're maybe looking to get married, then you know, looks are very superficial. They, they again, will only help to an extent. Yes, you might have good looking children, but if you're being with someone who you just, you know, you're not compatible with, then it's just clearly not going to work. And relationships are about some level of happiness uh, to that extent. It can't just be about looks and it definitely can't just be about sex. You also mentioned about that, you know, that you could ask her. Uh, what do you, What do I think about with you potentially asking her? Um, uh, what you could do to be uh, a, a great boyfriend. It can be very hit or miss depending on how long someone has been with someone in a relationship. So it's one that I probably wouldn't ask her simply because it could backfire. Um, I, I've, I've known people who have done that and it's then almost turned into an argument and then their, their partner has been like, like, why don't you know, you should know me by now, what I like and what I don't like, you know, it, and it can certainly spiral. Even like the most innocent question 
can certainly just turn into something that you just hadn't planned it to be. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, and I did mention it before as well, that, uh, you know, people do quit when things get kind of real, when, you know, people think like relationships are going to be all sunshines and rainbows, but it's a roller coaster and you have to expect that you're going to have either arguments or just bad moments and stuff and you just have to kind of deal with them. But it's worth just mentioning that even with like the four points that I'm about to give you, um, you probably will still make an error in judgment. You know, you might try and be supportive in one thing and actually you might just be supportive in the wrong possible way. You never really know. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, when it comes to women needing support from other women, there is, I think, genuinely a sixth sense that that tends to kick in and they can help each other and they just know exactly what, what each other needs in that support. Whereas for a guy, we can certainly get it wrong, um, you know, and we're not psychic. We're not a member of like the X-Men, like uh, is it Xavier uh, who's in, in the wheelchair. Unfortunately, it's just impossible to sometimes guess. So all we can do as a man is just try and guess to the best possible ability. And hopefully whatever kind of support that you do offer, it does get seen as you try your very hardest to be there as a supportive partner. And if there is a lot of disagreement in that, then again, that kind of leads to a conversation of like, well, uh, if my partner uh, doesn't like me really trying my hardest, then, you know, is is this actually working? I mean, surely they, they, they should be somewhat sympathetic to me trying my hardest to be supportive here. And if they don't appreciate that, then maybe that also means that they don't appreciate you. So of course I'm kind of uh, sort of digressing a little bit from what your your situations are, but I'm just sort of just trying to cover all the bases, especially for guys who maybe are in relationships where they do have problems and they're either uh, afraid to try and work things out or try and work through things, and perhaps maybe they're just also looking for an easy option to get out of a relationship, and um, just because it's it's easier to do. Um, But let's go through the four effective ways that you can, as a partner, certainly communicate and one that in a way that will hopefully um, just show your partner that you care as much as you possibly can, however long down the line you are in your relationship, whether it be a couple of months, a year, a couple of years and so on. So the first way to effectively communicate your affection to someone is to just be more altruistic. But to an extent, though, we're not talking about you bending over backwards and just doing literally everything for your partner uh, as if like you've become their uh, their slave of sorts. I'm talking about you doing things because you genuinely want to help her out because you're aware she's either going through tough moments or things are challenging for her, whatever that may be in her life. So consider things like, um, for example, Um, if you know that she's going to have a really bad day at work tomorrow, then maybe first thing in the morning, what you could do is get out of bed, make her a coffee and bring it to her while she's in bed as she's like waking up, uh, wishing her good morning and telling her that, you know, you, you know, I, she, I hope that you have a great day or, you know, even sending her messages whilst she is at work, not overwhelmingly, but you could send the odd message just saying like, good luck for today. I love you. I'm really proud of you. That sort of thing. Or perhaps you could just surprise her with like a cuddly toy or whatever. Uh, I think like the flowers thing is nice and all. I think it's probably a little bit overrated, Um, but a cuddly toy, I don't think you can go wrong with just randomly uh, surprising your partner with a, a cuddly toy and saying, you know what, uh, I went out today and I saw this and I thought of you and then you're giving it to your partner or during the day saying like, uh, I know you're having a really difficult day at work, but just so you know, I've got a gift waiting for you at home. So you have something to look forward to for when you come back. Um, and even if like she's had a stressful day or a stressful life, whatever, then, you know, when she comes home, you could still, uh, if she know, if you know that she's going to end up making dinner or cooking dinner for the two of you, and you can tell like it's going to be just a lot on her shoulders to deal with that, why not jump in and say, you know what, don't worry about dinner, I've got it. 
Even if you end up just ordering like a takeaway or something rather than cooking a meal for her, that's still something. But it's just almost preemptively thinking about what can you do to just try and make someone else's day if you know that they're going through some kind of like hard time or difficult situation or maybe they're just in a bad mood or whatever. You know, it's just trying to recognize those instances and thinking if I was in that same sort of position, what would make my day? You know, and I know I think for me, just something as simple as like someone wishing me good luck or telling me that they were proud of me or uh, telling me, look, uh, if you can get through the day, uh, there'll be something waiting for you when you get home or whatever, you know, things like that. Um, And if you kind of want to take it up a notch, um, something that you could do is actually buy some massage oil. And if you want to kind of create a little bit more uh, chemistry between the two of you, whether or not things kind of fall flat with the spark and you want to reignite it, You could potentially even tease about giving like a head or neck and shoulder massage and uh, sounds a bit naughty with a head there, but um, you could end up buying massage oil and then you could say when your partner comes in like, okay, go and lay on the bed, take your top off and go and lay on the bed and I'm going to give you the most amazing massage And then when she walks into the room, maybe there's like meditation music playing and you've got incented candles or whatever, you know, just things like that. Those are the little things that women will appreciate. They like just small gestures of affection, but it can certainly go a really long way. So I was just playing around with the lighting there. So a second thing that you could potentially do is to just try and proactively listen Uh, to what she says and offer support where it's needed. So I'll admit now women can be incredibly subtle when it comes to hoping that their partner picks up on the thing that they need help with. Great examples might be they might say about like, oh yeah, you know, I need to, when I get home later, I need to just do the washing and I need to just tidy up the house or, oh yeah, when I get home later, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the cooking. I know I'm going to be really tired, but sure, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on and do it. Those are kind of like little cues for you to go, okay, well, she's mentioned about the house. Okay, I could clean the house before she gets home. I could put the wash on and stuff before she gets home. So that's like some less chores for her to do. Uh, or I could cook dinner or I could do this or that. You know, I could sort out whatever things in the house. It, whatever the gesture is, I mean, I'm using just kind of very similar examples over and over again here, but whatever the, the the subtle message is that she's sort of like hinting at that she's got to end up dealing with, pick and choose what you want to help with, whether it be all of them or just one or two of them, but just something that, again, is going to be one less thing for her to worry about for when she gets home. And then up to you whether or not you want to say during the day, like, oh yeah, yeah, just so you know, I've done this for you. Or if you want to wait until she's back when you've got home from work or when she's got home from work uh, and she says, oh, I've got to do all these jobs and say, no, actually, you've only just got this to do. I did these other things for you. It's about teamwork. It's about working together and just trying to make life as easy as possible for each other. And I think as well, sometimes as a guy, it can be very easy to forget how supportive our partners can be for us because maybe we can take it for granted. You know, so just sometimes have a, just have a think, like, are there things that your partner is doing for you that maybe you aren't necessarily saying thank you about or appreciating and reciprocating back in some way. So saying that, you know, that you've been there really supportive for me, I wanted to show that this is me being as supportive as I possibly can for you as well. So it will be though something that maybe you might get right. You might also completely miss things. Unfortunately, women, again, can be really subtle about Uh, The hints that they give, they can almost be considered non-existent at times as well. So just just consider that that there will be things that you will miss. And then even then, there might still be an argument about like, oh, you didn't do this for me or that. And she expected you to essentially be psychic and know that those things needed doing. Or she might say, well, that was for you to take the initiative and do it. But you don't think about this sort of stuff. And again, like with what you mentioned in your post, that, you know, women don't quite grasp the fact that sometimes we can just 
be like completely switched off up there and not think about anything and still be very actively doing stuff whereas women can be thinking about a lot of jobs so there's just sort of an uh, an element of not just proactively listening but also just actively thinking about are there things that need to be done uh, that we can certainly help with so a third way to effectively communicate and this is one that I've certainly experienced myself is to not necessarily give advice but just listen so Maybe you've actually experienced this um, and maybe even for any other guy as well, but where you've been in a relationship and your partner has been telling you about all the problems that they've got in their life or things that they're annoyed with or things that they're angry with. And as a guy, we want to inherently try and fix these problems for the people that we care about, but they didn't ask for the help. They didn't even say like, oh, well, can you give me advice on this or can you help me with this? Sometimes women do just want to um, express themselves. They just want to kind of let their emotions and, and feelings out and that's it. They, they're not looking for advice. They're not looking for feedback on anything. They just wanted you to listen. So this one's a very difficult one because it's just a very natural thing to help anyone out and give them advice, I think. But try, if you can, hold back on giving advice unless you've asked for it. It's okay if, you know, to ask questions and flush out more understanding and information on things. And you can even say, like, would you like me to give you some advice on this? And you'll get the yes or no answer with that. But at the end of the day, you is and again it's really really strange to even suggest this but yeah unless you've been asked to give advice don't necessarily give it wait until you've been asked to give it or ask them if you want to if they'd be willing to accept the advice that you are uh, that you can offer and you'll find that i think just from that as well that can also just change uh, I think a slight got the hiccups again um, that can change the slight dynamic uh, in a sense of she's not feeling like you're you're doing the whole like mansplaining thing which I hate that word um, she'll just feel like oh you're just listening to her you're just being supportive whereas you might be just sort of sitting there going like I could solve this problem literally by if you do this one thing but you have to, uh, it's a bit like actually like being a life coach. You have to sort of take a step back and just be like, okay, you need to almost figure out the problem or you need to be the one to admit the feat and say, right, can you please give me the answer to solve my problem so I can move on with this? So it's just something to, to consider there, although it's a very, very difficult one. I can assure you that. Um, and the last one as well is, to just be aware of her emotions and just try and react accordingly. So sometimes if she's very upset, you need to be that rock to be very supportive of her. If she is sort of in a bad mood, best thing you can do is probably just stay away and let her and, and just sort of ride it out and just do what you can to, um, to ease her back into a good mood, which might be just do something in the house to support her. Unfortunately, as well, time of the month sort of thing can also affect someone's emotions and behaviours as well. Um, so might be sort of one of those moments to just be out the house on those sort of days. Um, but, but definitely, if anything, just being aware of someone else's moments and just thinking like, okay, if they're in a bad mood, what could I do to support them? If they're having a really bad day or if they're sad, what can I do to support them? If they are in a great mood, what else can I do to be there to make sure that they stay in a really happy mood? You know, those might be things that you might have to just sort of consider on your own, but at least it's just something that hopefully just gets you thinking about it and hope and and considering uh, specifically in the relationship that you're in, what would your partner in particular want from you? that is going to just make her day, make her feel like that she's supported and cared for as well. So I'll just cover those four things again. Point number one is just try and be more altruistic, but don't bend over backwards for someone. 
Um, if you end up doing the whole like simping thing, she'll just lose respect for you. But when you're doing stuff for someone that you care about and it's sort of very sporadic, it's very spontaneous um, and uh, you're doing or getting something to make her day, then that's a great thing. But don't don't bend over backwards uh, and don't start spending like money on ridiculous things like coming home with like a diamond tiara or something is not going to suddenly change the situation cuddly toy um packet of sweets or something something cheesy something that is just gonna sort of make her giggle and go like thank you for thinking of me um proactively listen to what she says and offer support where it's needed so just listen for cues in things that she does say and see if you can kind of jump in and be like right okay i can definitely help out with that or i can offer my help with that so maybe like she's traveling she's got to go travel somewhere you could jump in and say, well, look, you know what? I can tell that you're you're struggling with sorting out an Uber. Let me drive you there. Let me do that for you. Um, third point is don't necessarily give advice. Just listen and wait for the cue. Wait to be asked and then give advice or at least jump in and say, can I give you some advice on this? Would you be open to it? See what she says with that. And then the last one is just to be aware of her emotions and react accordingly. Be supportive in a way that you know would help your partner. And even thinking about it as if I was in that same emotional state, what kind of support would I want? That could be great for her too. But I think with that, I'm hoping I've kind of covered all the points there. I knew this was going to be a lot to try and sort of think about and cover, but I really do hope that it does answer your question. And, and definitely uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts in particularly on this video and even for other guys as well who are in relationships. If you want to jump into the comments as well, leave your responses, leave your thoughts and maybe even uh, offer some advice as well to this guy in what things he could definitely do to be supportive for his missus. Um, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but other than that, if you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, especially if you want more help and advice with your dating and relationship issues, especially around things to do with social anxiety and just anxiety with meeting new people and definitely with cold approaching as well. And, um, and if you find that all of them are a struggle, by all means do check out my website where I do offer life coaching and other therapies too. But other than that, my name is Dan. I've been that dating anxiety guy. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I genuinely hope that this advice really helps you out in your relationship too.